Hello students I hope that you all are fine today we are going to discuss another topic from anatomy and that is bones of lower limb first we'll study about the femur bone the femur is the only bone in the thigh and the longest bone in the body it is divided into three parts proximal shaft and distal first we are going to study about the proximal part of the femur the proximal part of the femur articulates with the acetabulum of the pelvis to form the hip joint it consists of the following Head is on the proximal end. It has a smooth surface covered with articular cartilage, except for a small depression, the fovea where ligamentum teres attaches. Neck is cylindrical in shape and connects the head of the femur with the shaft. Greater trochanter is the most lateral palpable projection of the bone that originates from the anterior aspect. Lesser trochanter, smaller than the greater trochanter, it projects from the posterior medial side of the femur. Intertrochanteric line is a ridge of bone that runs in the inframedial direction on the anterior surface of the femur, spanning between the two trochanters. After it passes the lesser trochanter on the posterior surface, it is known as the pectineal line. It is the site of attachment for the iliofemoral ligament, which is the strongest ligament of the hip joint. Intertrochanteric crust, like the intertrochanteric line, is a ridge of bone that connects the two trochanters. It is located on the posterior surface of the femur. There is a round tubercle on its superior half called as the quadrate tubercle. Clinical relevance. Proximal femur fractures. These fractures can be broadly classified into two main groups. Intracapsular, that occurs within the capsule of the hip joint. It can damage the medial femoral circumflex artery and can cause avascular necrosis of the femoral head. Extracapsular. The blood supply to the head of the femur is intact, so avascular necrosis is a rare complication. Now, we are going to discuss about the shaft of the femur. The shaft of the femur descends in a slight medial direction. This brings the knees closer to the body's center of gravity, increasing stability. On the posterior surface of the femoral shaft, there are roughened ridges of the bone called as the linea aspera. This splits distally to form the medial and lateral supracondylar lines. The flat popliteal surface lies between them. The medial supracondylar line ends at the arrector tubercle. Proximally, the medial border of the linea aspera becomes the pectineal line. The lateral border becomes the gluteal tuberosity. Clinical relevance. Fractures of the femoral shaft. Fractures of the femoral shaft can result in neurovascular structures at risk that include the femoral nerve and femoral artery. A closed femoral shaft fracture may result in considerable hemorrhage and loss of blood of up to 1000 to 1500 ml. Now, we are going to discuss about the distal part of the femur. The distal end of the femur is characterized by the presence of the medial and lateral condyles which articulate with the tibia and patella to form the knee joint. Median and lateral condyles are rounded areas at the end of the femur. The posterior and inferior surfaces articulate with the tibia and menisci of the knee, while the anterior surface articulates with the patella. Medial and lateral epicondyles. These are the bony elevations on the non-articular areas of the condyles. The medial epicondyle is larger. The medial and lateral collateral ligaments of the knee originate from the respective epicondyles. Intracondylar fossa. Intercondylar fossa is a deep notch on the posterior surface of the femur between the two condyles. It contains two facets for attachment of intracapsular knee ligaments, the anterior cruciate ligament and the posterior cruciate ligament. Now we are going to study about the next bone of the lower limb which is patella. The patella is also known as the kneecap. It is located at the front of the knee joint with the patellofemoral groove of the femur. It is classified as a sesamoid type bone and is the largest sesamoid bone in the body. The patella has a triangular shape with anterior and posterior surfaces. The apex of patella is situated inferiorly and is connected to the tibial tuberosity by the patella ligament. The posterior surface of patella articulates with the femur and is marked by two facets. Medial facet articulates with the medial condyle of the femur. Lateral facet articulates with the lateral condyle of the femur. The patella has two main functions, leg extension and protection of the lower limb. Clinical relevance, injury to the patella. Patella dislocation and patella fracture. Patella dislocation. In a patella dislocation, the patella bone is displaced out of the patellofemoral groove. It accounts for, account for around 3% of the knee injuries. Most dislocations are caused by high force impact on the patella or forceful sudden twisting of the knee. These mechanisms of injury make patellar dislocation more common in individuals participating in sports such as football, rugby and ice hockey. Patellar fracture. 
Patellar fracture usually results from direct trauma to the bone or sudden contraction of the quadriceps muscle. They are more common in males and in the 20 to 50 age range. Now we are going to study about the next bone of the lower limb which is the tibia. The tibia is the main bone of the lower leg forming what is more commonly known as the shin bone. It expands at its proximal and distal ends articulating at the knee and ankle joints respectively. The tibia is the second largest bone in the body and is a key weight bearing structure proximal end of the tibia. The proximal tibia is widened by medial and lateral condyles. The tibial condyle articulate with the femoral condyles to form the key articulation of the knee joint. Located between the tibial condyles is a region called as the intercondylar eminence. This projects upwards on either side as the medial and lateral intercondylar tubercles. Shaft. The shaft of the tibia is a prism shaped with three borders and three surfaces, anterior, posterior and lateral. For brevity, only the anatomically and clinically important borders and surfaces are mentioned here. Anterior border. Palpable subcutaneously down the anterior surface of the leg as the shin. The proximal aspect of the anterior border is marked by tibial tuberosity. Posterior surface. Marked by a ridge of bone known as the soleal line. Lateral border. Also known as the introsious border, it gives attachment to the introsious membrane that binds the tibia and the fibula together. Clinical relevance, intraosseous axis. Intraosseous axis is a form of vascular axis used in the emergency setting. It allows the administration of fluids, blood products, and medications directly into the bone marrow. IO axis is typically used in emergency when intravenous access is not obtainable. There are two main sites in the tibia that are suitable for the introsious axis. Anteromedial surface, 2 to 3 cm below the tubal tuberosity and proximal to the medial malleolus. Complications of introsious axis include osteomyelitis, iatrogenic fracture and compartment syndrome. Introsious infusion should be discontinued when IV access has been achieved. Distal end. The distal end of the tibia widens to assist the weight bearing. The medial malleolus is a bony projection continuing inferiorly on the medial aspect of the tibia. It articulates with the tarsal bones to form part of the ankle joint. Laterally is the fibular notch where the fibula is bound to the tibia forming the distal tibiofibular joint. Clinical relevance. Fractures of the tibia. Fractures of the tibia are relatively common. There are two main types. High energy trauma occurs predominantly in younger population and low energy trauma insufficiency fractures occurs predominantly in the elder population. Now we're going to study about the next bone of the lower limb which is fibula. The fibula is a bone located within the lateral aspect of the leg. Its main function is to act as an attachment for muscles and not as a weight bearer. It has three main articulations. Proximal tibiofibular joint articulates with the lateral condyle of the tibia. Distal tibiofibular joint articulates with the fibular notch of the tibia. Ankle joint articulates with the talus bone of the foot. Proximal end of the fibula. At the proximal end, the fibula has an enlarged head which contains a facet for articulation with the lateral condyle of the tibia. On the posterior and lateral surface of the fibular neck, the common fibular nerve can be found. Shaft. The fibular shaft has three surfaces, anterior, lateral and posterior. The leg is split into three compartments and each surface faces its respective compartment. For example, anterior surface faces the anterior compartment of the leg. Distal. Distally, the lateral surface continues inferiorly and is called as the lateral malleolus. The lateral malleolus is more prominent than the medial malleolus and can be palpated at the ankle on the lateral side of the leg. Clinical relevance. Fractures of the fibula. At the ankle, the lateral malleolus of the fibula is prone to fracture. There are two main ways in which this fracture occurs. The first way is by forced external rotation of the ankle. This force of the talus against the bone causes a spiral fracture of the lateral malleolus. The other less common way by the foot being twisted outwards called eversion. Again, the talus presses against the lateral malleolus and this time causes a transverse fracture. Now, we're going to study about the bones of the foot. The bones of the foot provide mechanical support for the soft tissues, helping the foot withstand the weight of the body while standing and in motion. They can be divided into three groups. Tarsals, a set of seven irregularly shaped bones. They are situated proximally in the foot in the ankle area. Metatarsals, connect the phalanges to the tarsals. They are five in number, one for each digit. Phalanges, 
in the bones of the toes. Each toe has three phalanges, proximal, intermediate and distal, except the big toe which has only two phalanges. So this was all about the video guys. Do like and subscribe to my channel to motiv motivate me to make these videos free for you guys. Thank you and have a nice day.